Over the years, I've ran a number of different experiments, and for the most part, I got results that were at least interesting enough to make a whole video, but I've also had my fair share of swings and misses. I've done a few experiments that were kind of interesting, but I didn't know what else to do with it. So I just kind of sat on these projects hoping to maybe come up with something more, but ultimately it just kind of sat there, so I figure it's time to clean house and to throw this stuff out there. Like this one. I had two rolls of Kodak Gold 120, both from the same pro pack with the same production number. One roll was lovingly placed and stored in the fridge, whereas the other was just tossed in the glove compartment of my car. And these two rolls stayed there for over a year. Now mind you, my car isn't kept in some climate controlled garage, it's just parked out on the street. So it got mighty toasty during the summer. And what effect did it have on the film? First you have this one. And then you have this one. I'll give you a few seconds to figure out which one's which. Surprisingly, except for the curliness, they actually look pretty much the same. There are some subtle differences in the color, but if I didn't know the storage conditions, I would just chalk it up to margin of error. I thought there would be a bigger difference. I was so sure I didn't even label these rolls, I just assumed I could tell by looking at it. So when I first looked at the negatives, I didn't know which one was which. But to me the big giveaway was this frame. I remember capturing the bird on the fresh back and then it flew away by the time I was able to switch backs. So while there weren't any obvious color shifts, there does seem to be some physical effects of leaving it in a car for a year. So if you plan on storing your film in a glove compartment for a year, I think for the most part you'll be fine. Although, I guess it depends on where you live and what kind of weather you have. Now, I do plan on exploring this a little further. Next time, I think I'll leave a roll on the dash just to see what would happen if it gets exposed to the sun directly. But the problem is, this is going to take at least another year. So, I figure I'd just throw it out there because there's a good chance I might forget to do that. Next thing is what I call trifocal trichrome. So, here's the setup. Traditional trichrome involves using a red, green, and blue filter on a stationary locked off camera. But here's the idea I had. What if along with the three different filters, I use three different focal lengths as well? I decided to go with a 24, a 50, and a 135. Is this a good idea? I have no idea. What's the worst that could happen? The best way I could put this is it's like a trichrome dolly zoom. So what I was hoping for is to have the subject dead center and everything else turn into like this chromatic aberration from hell. So I think I was able to kind of capture that with two of these shots. These two literal garbage shots. But I think everything else just kind of falls a little short. I now realize that for the best effect, you should have the subject perfectly parallel with the focal plane. And a flatter subject works better because any depth and contour gets exaggerated by the wider focal length. If it's done well, I think it could look neat but beyond that, I don't know where else to take this. The next idea I had was something I call reverse trichrome. One of the biggest drawbacks of a traditional trichrome is that it uses three exposures for one color photo. It's not the most efficient, and given the price of film nowadays, it's not the most economical. But what if I did something like a reverse trichrome where I took one roll of color film, triple exposed one frame with a red, green, and blue filter, and separate the color channels to create three different black and white photos. And that's what this looks like. First, let's take a look at the straight scans. Yeah, it's a mess. It's interesting looking, but very busy. But what happens when you separate the channels? Some of these shots worked out surprisingly well, whereas I would say most of them did not. Let's look at this one frame. This is just the blue channel. Besides the overexposure, it looks fine. 
But then when you look at the green channel, you could see the chain link fence bleed through. And then the red channel, you get this kind of neat looking multi-exposure looking thing going on, but not exactly the crisp individual image I was looking for. So what's happening here? The red, green, and blue sensitive layers of the film are not perfectly sensitive to their respective color layers. As an example, here's the spectral sensitivity chart for Portra 400. You can see the sensitivity of the cyan forming layer, which is the red sensitive layer. The red channel primarily captures red, but also some green mixed in. So there are some bleed over from the layers themselves. And the same thing is happening with the filters as well, although it was much more negligible compared to the film. I knew there was going to be some bleed over, but it's a little more than I was hoping for. And while it's a little disappointing, I don't know how else you would take 36 6x6 photos on a single roll of 120, so there's that at least. But beyond that, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know where else to take these experiments. Maybe you guys have a better idea, so I'll just put it out there. I'd love to see what you guys could come up with. And if you don't want to do it, just let me know. I'll try it.